As we all know, Avatar The Last Airbender and Legend of Korra um, were interesting shows. Obviously, people like one of them better than the other, which is pretty obvious. So, but what might I have changed about these shows? So if I had the ability to change things about these shows, first of all, what I might have done is... I think that I would have maybe ended Avatar The Last Airbender with the end of book two, where Azula shoots Aang while he's in the Avatar state, and so Aang would actually die in this scenario. And Katara, as the Katara tries to escape with Aang's body, I would have Azula shoot lightning at Katara at the water, and Katara would be electrocuted like ming -Wah was, and Aang would be electrocuted again. And so both Katara and Aang would die in that scene. And so maybe Sokka, Toph, and the Earth King and the bear would escape, or maybe they would also be captured, and uh, maybe Toph would go down fighting, and it would have been a spectacular battle in the end. I know that's a very dark and dramatic way to end it, but I think that would have been nice to do it that way. Also, but going back, um, I would have liked to have seen more of King Bumi. He was a fascinating character, and I kind of understand why they wrote him out, because he was way too powerful, and if he had been traveling with Team Avatar, then they would have the series would have been over too quickly because Boomy would have just beat everyone, so I understand that that's why they probably uh, made Boomy into a minor character. Um, moving on, in season, in book one of Avatar The Last Airbender, I think that I honestly wouldn't have changed a whole lot with book one. Except I, 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 would, I might have um, taken Team Avatar to the North Pole a lot sooner, but I'm not sure about that either. I think book one was fairly decent, and same thing with book two. Um, yeah, there's not a whole lot of individual changes I would make to the Avatar, um, the last airbender plot. Although I suppose one thing I would do is when I was, um, I might have killed off Uncle Iroh at the end of book two, and that would have been a major impact on Zuko's character because he would never have gotten the chance to, you know, um, say goodbye to Iroh, and he would have just betrayed him, and that would have been the end of it. So I think that would have also been more impactful in making Zuko turn good again. I really like how they almost made Zuko good in book two, and then they made him bad again, and then he had to become good again. That was very interesting and phenomenal for his story arc. Now, as we go on, okay, in book three, another thing that I really liked was how they didn't actually reveal Ozai's face until book three. Like, they had him in the shadows of book one, and in book two, they just had part of his mouth and mustache showing, but they didn't, and beard showing, but they didn't actually show his whole face. And I like that because it adds the mysterious nature, and I think Ozai... They did a great job of having a villain who, who was distant and seemed a little far off, but was actually very important and actually not as distant as it seems. Like, it's hard to explain, but if you watch the series, they do a good job with all of their villains. Now, yeah, I think I might have mixed it up a little bit too, where I might have... Um, also uh, killed off some of the main characters, so maybe Katara dies and then Aang has to deal with that loss, maybe Sokka dies and they have to deal with that loss, or maybe Toph dies and they have to deal with that loss, or so on and so forth. Make the stakes a little higher, that's a good idea. Now... Uh, moving 
moving on to so within book three, I wouldn't have made Hama go away to jail. I think I would have had Katara forgive Hama and have Hama go back to the Southern Water Tribe and be reunited with Kana and maybe all of her other friends who are alive. And because she, Hama was a very tragic character and it's not really her fault that she ended up that way. I mean, I guess it kind of is, but I think it would have been nice for a Southern Water Tribe, a waterbender to be able to go back to go back home and that would have been a good thing to have. I'm just trying to think because with Avatar The Last Airbender, I don't have many complaints about the plot, so. Okay, and going to the comics for Avatar The Last Airbender, I think it would have been nice if, um, since Aang already has the power to take away bending, because the Lion Turtles told him how to do it. I think it would be also great if Aang had the power to give earth bending, I mean air bending. So maybe Aang could have given the air acolytes or air bending powers. So the air acolytes are already helping Aang restore the air temples and they're already preserving the air nomad ways and they're already acting like air nomads. So if he had just been able to give them all airbending and train them all to be airbenders, then they could have started rebuilding the air nation even faster. And then um, Aang wouldn't have had to rely solely on Tenzin to uh, preserve the air nomad teachings. <laughs> and so maybe by the time uh, Book One in Legend of Korra shows up, Book One Air, the Air Nation ha has already been rebuilt. So there are so many air acolytes, and they all have air bending thanks to Aang. And so they basically filled up the air temples again. That would have been nice to just have the Air Nation back right away in Book One. Now, with the promise, not a whole lot I would have changed with the promise. I didn't like the book, but I. Thought it was interesting. I, I think it was a good story, even though I didn't like it personally. With some other comics, in that the search was terrific, it was easily one of the best. I mean, I kind of wish they had had um, Ursa's mother, Raina, Roku's daughter, like still alive so that she could meet Aang, but other than that, pretty good. Um, let's see. Smoke and Shadow was wonderful, as was um, The Rift. I loved seeing Yang Chen's story and Toph reuniting with her father, and that was great. And I think, speaking of Aang being able to give airbending, I think it would have been great if Aang had, been, uh, had gotten the power to give airbending to the air acolytes in The Rift. Maybe at the end, after the town, after they revive some of the traditions, then Aang just gives the air acolytes airbending and he trains them and they get good. And in Smoke and Shadow, I think that um, they... I really wish that um, they had managed to capture Azula again in the comics and then Aang could just take away her bending and she'd be fairly powerless without her bending. So Aang taking away Azula's bending and Azula having to deal with that, and that could have been another mental episode where Azula's character is able to evolve and she learns to live without her bending or something of that nature. Uh, moving on. So, okay, so going to the Legend of Korra. Um, some good stuff. Uh, book, th book one, I like the plot of it a lot. Like I said, I would have brought the Air Nation back completely so the Air Acolytes would be the new Air Nomads and so they wouldn't have as few Air Nomads. And one thing I would change though is for Aang and Katara's children, instead of having um, a non-bending child, what, they, what I would have done was Actually, no, I would have kept the non-bending child, Bumi, but I would have made Kaya, the daughter, the airbender, and uh, Tenzin, the son, the waterbender. So I would have made the daughter the waterbender and 
And the daughter, the airbender, and the son, the waterbender, that would have been more interesting, I think. And I would have given Toph uh, two sons instead of two daughters. Yeah, Lin and Sue would be sons instead of daughters. Um, Tenzin would be a waterbender, and Kaya would be an airbender. Now, with Korra, um, I like and I also incredibly dislike the fact that they had her train solely at the South Pole. That was a little annoying, I think, but they do explain the reasons in the plot later, so I do understand it, but like, still very annoying, and it does play a big part to her character much later, so that's something to look into. They were focused a little too much on Republic City in Book 1. And they really should have branched out further and done a lot more with the past lives. And I would have, sure, Aang would be nice. But instead of seeing Aang too much, maybe some other past lives and more of that. Um, yeah, they focused too much on Republic City. And they really could have used that opportunity to go the, to the um, go explore the Southern Water Tribe a little more. Or Northern Water Tribe, Fire Nation, Earth Kingdom. So they spent too much time in Republic City in Book 1. And Amon was... I really like how they have different villains for each season. So, okay, yeah, I think Amon was a good villain. Um, in book two, book two, um, I didn't... I think it was good, but I still hated it. So, what I would have done with book two is... Oh, huh, yeah, it's tricky. What I would have done with book two is I would have revealed, and uh, you, you saw my theory on this already, but I would have revealed uh, Tanrock and Unalak to be the sons of uh, Han, who was the fiancé of Princess Yue. So uh, I'll link this video in, at the end, but I think if they had made the connection of Princess Yue's fiancé being uh, Tanrock and Unalak's father, that would have just been an interesting connection. And also... The conflict between the Northern and Southern Water Tribe, that was awesome. That was very good plot writing. That part was, at least. And moving on, I would have... I would have gone to the Fire Nation in the season, in Book 2, and explored the Fire Nation a little more. Uh, it would have been nice to see a Zumi. And in regards to the to Zuko's family, actually what I would have done is I would have given a Zumi more children and I would have given um, General Iroh, Zuko's grandson, I would have given him his own grandchildren so he would already be pretty old by that point. And I would have given Zuko a few more descendants. And um, in, the, in book two, we see that um, some Fire Nation... Zealots are raising some Sky Bison, but instead of Sky Bison, I would have liked to have seen dragons. So maybe the Fire Nation Zealots over there, uh, the ones who helped Korra, I mean, the ones who helped her regain her Avatar memory, maybe they were raising dragons, maybe they were protecting the dragons since the Hundred Year War. And so we see that I would love to have seen the more dragons around in Legend of Korra, that would have been great. To know that there are more, many more dragons out there. And also, book two. I wouldn't have destroyed all of Korra's past lives. That was just bad. <laughs> I understand the impact, and it's great that they had it the way they did. Actually, with the past lives, let me get back to that. Yeah, let me get back to the past lives in a bit. But yeah... And then season two would have ended. And season three, the Red Lotus, they were incredible villains. And I would have kept season three mostly the same. Except I would have given Zuko more fighting scenes and I would have really given him the opportunity to show how powerful he was. And I would have included Zuko in book three a lot more. It would have been a more central part of the plot. And maybe, actually, um, 
after Zaheer and Guzan and Mingwa escape, they I would have had them go to the Fire Nation and attack the Fire Lord. Um, but then Azumi, Zuko, and Iroh and everyone else would have been there and they would have easily beaten the Red Lotus and the Zaheer would escape but then be taken down by Korra or something. And of course, for Book 4, I would have made the stakes a lot higher. So what I would have done is I would have had the entire city of Bossing State just go under. They get rid of the wall, they just get rid of everything, and there's no trace of the palace, of relics, everything, and there's no trace of the Earth Kingdom. There's no trace of the monarchy ever having existed, so that's a really big troubling moment. And so maybe I would have used Kuvira, maybe I wouldn't have. I'm not sure how I would have done that there. I would have switched it around a lot to where it would have been to where maybe Korra has to learn that the Earth Kingdom needs to be separated, split up, broken up. Oh yeah, it's a little tricky with that book. But at the end of book four, um, after Korra stops the canon, I would actually have had the canon wipe out Kuvira. <laughs> And then Korra stops the canon and creates a new spirit portal, but in the process, she somehow regains her connection to all of her past lives. Sort of similar to how Aang uh, was able to reopen his avatar state at the end of book four with the big impact from uh, Sozin's fire blast. But yeah, I would have had Korra regain her connection to all of her past lives, so maybe she could have had a conversation with Wan or Aang at the end. That would have been great. And maybe with... Um, Korra's journey, um, remember in book four in the episode where Korra's recovering, I would have had Zuko come along and uh, give Korra a ride on his dragon, and maybe they could have gone to some place, Ember Island, Kyoshi Island, maybe they could have even gone to Avatar Roku's temple, and maybe Korra could have tried to regain some of her connection to Avatar Roku, or at least been able to speak to him for some short amount of time, and so maybe it would have been a situation where Zuko takes Korra to the Fire Sage Temple where she goes in and speaks to Avatar Roku because his, let's say, his spirit was still attached to that temple even though everything else is gone and she would have tried to regain somewhat of a connection and Zuko could have spoken to Roku and that would have been interesting. And there are so many better ways they could have done that whole show even though I think I did like the show but I also didn't like it so but there are so many better ways they could have done it. I'm just trying to see if I missed anything. Well, I'm sure I missed a lot, but there are many ways I would change Legend of Korra. Oh, and another possibility is that maybe Korra could, could have been killed off at the end of Book 3, and that would have been the end of it. Avatar killed in the Avatar state, Avatar is gone, and the world no longer has the Avatar. That could have been the end. <laughs> Just many things, or even ended with book two, where um, Rava's just destroyed, and that's it, and Unavatu is taking over the world. It's uh, quite... Hmm. Lots of interesting ways we could go here. All pretty good.